Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes a todos. ¿Cómo están? Bienvenidos. Mi nombre Good es Good afternoon Mar everybody. I'm Mariela Rocha and uh, in the name of LACNIC, I welcome you to this new webinar. In this case it's called What can I find at the event? <clears throat> the webinar will be in the hands of uh, the Development Cooperation Manager, Laura Kaplan, but in addition, we have another important contribution on the proposals for policy that we'll be able to see in the next uh, public policy forum. <clears throat> in this case, it will be in charge of Franco Cabrera, who's our policy assistant. We remind you, as you've seen uh, in uh, the initial video, that this webinar is being recorded and that you will um, uh, have um, the uh, presentation available in uh, very soon and you can choose uh, your language clicking on the globe in the, your toolbar you can choose to listen to it in spanish english or portuguese likewise we invite you to ask any questions you may deem necessary throughout the webinar since at the end we're going to devote a section for q a so to do that Please click on uh, the toolbar where it says uh, Q&A or um, questions and answers. So without further ado, I welcome uh, my colleagues, Laura Caplan and Franco Cabrera, and uh, we'll start with this webinar. Go ahead, Laura. Thank you, Mariela, and welcome everyone. Let me uh, show the presentation. So now let's get everything ready. All right, as Mariela told you, I'm Laura Kaplan. I'm uh, the uh, manager of the Development and Cooperation Department at LACNIC and to put together this presentation that I called, what can I find at LACNIC 41? The purpose of this webinar and this presentation is that those of you who are coming to our event for the first time and you want to learn more what you, uh, what you will learn may uh, have a certain idea and uh, ins get inspired to join us at LACNIC 41, either in person or uh, remotely. So before we discuss uh, the event itself, let's talk about what LACNIC is. I imagine that everybody um, present today have some idea, that's why you came, but uh, it's never uh, too much to um, uh, disc to tell you what LACNIC is. It's um, the Latin American and Caribbean Internet Addresses Registry. It's part of uh, the RIR uh, system. It is a non-profit uh, organization that is uh, has its headquarters in Uruguay. It was, was founded in 2002. And it's the organization that is uh, um, responsible for the um, <clears throat> assignment administration and uh, the registry of numeric resources in the internet. So it applies to Latin America and the Caribbean. And in addition to that key role that it has for allocating and managing uh, the um, resources, numeric resources, it has other functions, including capacity building to strengthen the community of a technical community and it also um, organizes uh, activities for cooperation um, or inter organizational um, organizations and then franco will tell us a bit more of uh, the, that allocation of an american numbers is given through the so-called uh, policy development process and it is through that that we manage based on what the policy manual tells us and that policy manual is a document that can be decided that is anybody can participate in that process to update the policy manual we'll see it later on um, so this is a general overview so it's a non-profit uh, organization so it's the latin america and caribbean internet address uh, registry but it's more than that because LACNIC has a vision and a mission that go beyond uh, um, administering the numeric resources. Uh, 
uh, essentially, it's building a regional community for a better global internet. For LACNIC, it's absolutely essential to lead this permanent construction of the regional community, strengthening the technological capacities and applied research for the development of a stable and open internet. So, having said all that, now we understand what LACNIC is, what LACNIC does, but also the mission and uh, the broader uh, vision of LACNIC uh, as uh, an organization will understand what the event is all about. Let me start by saying that it's a conference. It's an internet conference, one of the most important internet conference in, in terms of its relevance uh, in the region, because we are the organization that is in charge of uh, managing the resources for the entire region, Latin America and the Caribbean. And uh, um, it's uh, the encounter of this technical community for capacity building and relations building. Uh, it's, it's a week in which uh, we meet with the technical community. We, uh, we get together physically in a city, in a place to share experience and to strengthen our capacities. And what comes afterwards is the space for technical uh, training. The LACNIC uh, event is a platform through which we provide uh, hands-on um, uh, training uh, on uh, uh, network operations, security, and numeric resources management. In addition to that encounter that we have with technical uh, training, the event is a platform that enables uh, the debate on policy that will then be integrated into the manual, so that is going to be part of how LACNIC uh, administers the numeric uh, resources, but we also debate on standards, regulations. It's a space that we have uh, to discuss new technologies and best practices and everything that has an impact on the development of the internet in general. So, as I was saying, that is, uh, Mm, those are the uh, main things. Now, what will we find at the event? When I uh, reach, when I get there and it starts, or when I uh, connect, what are those spaces that we include? First of all, as I said, it's a platform for a, a meeting. It's a hybrid event, but it has five days in person in a city, where, and we r rotate through different uh, cities in Latin America and the Caribbean under the scope of LACNIC. And in addition to these five days, uh, there are seven uh, parallel meetings. Uh, that is um, side events that uh, occur, uh, that are organized by other organizations of the ecosystem. And uh, this is a very important uh, opportunity you have for social and professional networking. In addition to the presentations and the technical training, we have a commercial um, uh, uh, trade show that is part of the event. So during the coffee breaks, uh, and uh, you can visit it. And it's part of our social and professional networking. So these five days of the event, uh, we have the technical meetings. Usually we have two strong days, Monday and uh, Thursday, we have the tutorials. In this event, LACNIC 41 will have uh, eight different um, tutorials, one of IPv6 only, another one on interconnection. We're going to discuss a routing security, automation, uh, validation of origin, autonomous systems, uh, and the use uh, of LACNIC. Well, if you are a member of LACNIC, you certainly know MeLACNIC. There are tutorials showing you how to use MeLACNIC, tutorials on um, how to develop policy, and all those tutorials are handed uh, hands-on so that we can uh, have uh, experts uh, that are uh, opinion leaders in the industry, and they know a lot, uh, they, and they come to teach us about it. So we... Uh, it's a, it's a meeting for technical uh, learning. It's a space for debate and for building knowledge because we have panels, we have speakers, we have people that present technical papers. In May, there is a the forthcoming event. We have a LACNIC technical forum. We have 20 presentations of uh, 
current issues with speakers that generated the developed uh, papers or research and are going to present the results during these five days of the event. Let's track on policy development, which is something I already mentioned, and has to do with the policy development process. It's a bottom-up process, and this allows any individual from the community to submit a proposal to modify those rules whereby LACNIC assigns and manage the number of resources. This is a totally open discussion for those who wish to participate, and those rules that are then defined are done so by consensus. So in that forum, the authors from the community will be submitting seven new policy proposals. And this finally, finally, another thing that is very important, because this is the basis of the LACNIC 41 event, is the member assembly. LACNIC is an organization that is based on membership. It is composed by 12,700 member associations, which are the decision makers of the governments of the organization. They elect the members of the board. The, at this opportunity, they review different topics and the members participate in person. This is what you can find in the LACNIC 41 website. And it's interesting to have an overview of what I was telling you. These five days full of events, as I was saying, we will be starting on Monday through to Friday. There are different activities which we commented on on Monday. We have tutorials. This is a day dedicated to technical capacity building. And we also have a session for new participants, those who for the first time come to the event. And it's the most recommended so that you can learn how to participate in this event. I was also telling you that there will be parallel events. What you can see there is LACNIC, LAC Turing Forum. This will also take place on Monday. On Tuesday, we have the opening ceremony. This is the opening event. And during that opening session, in addition to the formal aspects, we'll have a panel on internet and satellite internet. And then we will have the LACNIC technical forum on Wednesday. We will have the public policy forum and the members general assembly, which is where the member organizations come to the meeting. We also have the technical forum. This is not something that takes place every single time. But we will have the Karibnog Day, which is a special session to include certain topics that are of particular interest for the Caribbean region. And on Friday, which is the last day, we have work on internet measurements. And then a very interesting session that takes place after lunch. You will read down there, Internet in Panama, Present and Future. And this specifically is for local players and actors. This has to do with the challenges and with issues that are relevant to that country where the venue will be. We have had internet in Bolivia, in Colombia, in Mexico, where, depending on the venue. So this time it will be Panama, as I was saying. This is an opportunity. We also have times opportunities for networking and social events. We have a welcome cocktail. We'll have the breaks and lunchtime, which are opportunities to connect with colleagues from the region. Some of the suggested tracks or a highlight from the agenda have to do with the tutorials. On Monday, you can participate in the technical tutorials, and we have the opening session on Tuesday. We have this opening panel with experts. We'll be discussing the role of satellite internet in regional connectivity. On Wednesday, there will be a very interesting panel, uh, which began, uh, this is on 
fair share discussions that began in Brazil, we're going to be celebrating the 20th anniversary of one of the programs of uh, Frida. This is a program that provides funds and support and awards to those organizations that are working on a topic, might be research or some topic that is related to building the internet. And we're going to be casting a view over the past 20 years and a view towards the coming 20 years. We'll then have the public policy forum and the members assembly. On Thursday, we have the LACNIC technical forum and on Friday, the internet measurement group, as I was telling you, and the Panama internet event. So if you go in, check the website on the agenda, we'll have the names of the different presentations as well as the speakers. This will allow you to organize your the different sessions you'd like to take part in. And over here, I would like to give the floor to Franco. He's a policy assistant. And it's important to specifically be aware of this part, which is most relevant. It's important to participate in this uh, in this um, event, you needn't be a member, and we'll be seeing what are the different policies that will be discussed during LACNIC 41. Franco, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. As Laura was telling you, the policy development process, which we call PDP, according to the acronym in Spanish. It's a collaborative process that is open to the community. It creates and modifies the policies that the RIR applies in the region. This begins identifying the needs on the assignment or the use of resources in the region. For example, IPv4 addresses, IPv6 addresses, and so on. As from that moment, a policy proposal is created, which is then open to discussion in the community. Now, how does the discussion take place? This discussion takes place in two different spaces. There is an open list for policy discussion and during the public policy forum, which takes place during the LACNIC event. During the next forum will be on Wednesday, the 8th of March, during LACNIC 41. Mariela will be supporting us with some data on the chat. Thank you. There you have the public policy list. And the important thing throughout the process is a concept of consensus. What is consensus? Consensus is the measure that the moderators have to determine whether a policy is accepted or not by the community. Now, let me highlight that consensus is not based on voting. It has to do with the acceptance of the policy proposal. For those of you who are not aware, the moderators are elected by the community to act as such during the policy development process. At present, they are Marcela Orbiscay from Argentina and Sergio Rojas from Paraguay. Now, I would like to tell you in general terms what the different stages are of the policy development process. There are six stages. First of all, we have the initial discussion. That is where the policy is discussed. This takes them out. This varies. As the minimum, it's eight weeks, but the maximum is the time required for a proposal to then be submitted to the policy development um, forum, in this case, in May. So after the initial discussion, it is where the moderators determine consensus. We told you more or less what it's about, and we told you who the moderators are. And then there are two weeks to determine whether the policy proposal reaches consensus, then it is open to last comments. What does this mean? It means it can be discussed further during four weeks to see things that maybe weren't discussed in the initial discussion or other things that were omitted. And we have the period, a second period to determine the consensus. The moderators have this Page. And if it does reach consensus, it is ratified by the board. The board decides whether the policy has been ratified or not. 
It then goes on to the last stage, which is implementation. If the proposal is not ratified by the board, it returns to the discussion or it is also abandoned. This depends. Any questions so far? If there are no questions, so let us have a look at the proposal that will be presented during the next public policy forum. So shall we go on? Forum. We have the following policy proposals. The first has been identified as like 2023-3 version 2, and it is considerations for declaring a proposal abandoned. So this eliminates the role of the moderators of deciding if a policy is abandoned, and LACNIC would assume the responsibility of determining determine goes on to being in the status abandoned after 12 months of inactivity. Then we have LAC 2024 version 2, which is legacy resource management. It establishes minimum requirements for using legacy resources, and it also defines measures for their recovery in the case of non-compliance. It additionally proposes to the board to discontinue services of legacy resources. And then we have LAC 2023 6 version 2, which is special exception for global critical infrastructure providers, and it is allows exceptions for operators of root servers outside the LACNIC region in order to operate the root server, the DNS root server, AnyCast Global. Then the fourth proposal is temporary transfers, LAC 2023-7 version 2. It allows to carry out temporary transfers in addition to the already existing definite IPv4 transfers with specific conditions for each type of transfer. We then have LAC 2024-1 version 1, introducing proposals to the PDP. It modifies the procedure whereby to, to submit and review policy proposals. Then we have 2024-2 version 1, which is procedure for appeals. It redefines the appeals process at LACNIC. It establishes specific deadlines and a committee of appeals to settle discrepancies. And then we have LAC 2024 3 version 1 called use of resources by third parties authorized by recipients. This proposal allows ISPs or end users to authorize third parties to use the IPv4 addresses that were assigned to these by LACNIC. So this has to do with the policy proposals for the next public policy forum. This is a summary that we prepared of each of these policy proposals. But if you want to know more of the details in order to participate in the discussion, in the list or during the forum, you can access the website where you have all the information on the policies. So thank you, and thank you, Franco. I encourage you to write down your questions, and once the webinar is over, we'll have a space for Q&A so we can go back to any other topics that we presented during this presentation. Now, I will continue telling you about this event as well as uh, other activities and parallel events. As I was saying, the LACNIC event is not just the conference. This LACNIC event is also a platform for networking, for meeting, and other organizations of the ecosystem can organize their own activities and meetings. And I was telling you, we have seven different specific spaces let me tell you about this. Some are closed and are based on invitations, but they will be taking place. You will be meet, seeing people from these organizations. We have LAC Peering Forum. This is an open event, but there's a limit to, in the capacity. And there's a separate registration. You have to access the website of LACNIC 41 and check here and ready to participate in this 
seminar on this uh, LAC peer forum. Then we have the Internet Governance Seminar. This is a closed event by invitation, and it is more specific for regulatory issues on governance issues that are different from the more technical conversations have in other spaces. Then we have the LAC TLD Commercial Technical and Legal Workshop. This is for associates. Then the LAC C CERT Conference, which is on security and is also a closed conference. But if you are listening to this webinar and you're involved in security issues, then you can feel free to contact someone from this organization. On the other hand, I was telling you that we are going to spend an entire day with Carib Naga, the uh, network uh, organization the, of the Caribbean, and we are going to discuss topics that have directly to do uh, with uh, the uh, Caribbean countries and uh, drawing some parallelisms with uh, the region in general. It's going to be a very interesting meeting, and in addition, we are going to um, have uh, an opportunity to talk um, with the people that participate of the Caribbean. The um, um, assembly of uh, LACIX members for interconnections, they're going to have their assembly and Comtelca, that's another organization, they will have a, a closed meeting uh, through invitations only. And uh, wrapping up, I don't want to uh, leave this out because it's very important. It's the space, social and networking spaces because not, not only do we go there to learn, uh, not only do we listen to presentations at the LACNIC event, but because it's a, an excellent opportunity to get together with people, with colleagues, with people that uh, are offering technological solutions in the trade show, some business I may be interested in. So there's a lot of opportunities for networking during the event. The simplest thing, coffee breaks are places for informal meetings as well as lunch that uh, is offered at the convention center. So if you register to participate there, your, your lunch will be included all week long. And those are excellent opportunities to get together with people and uh, have a chat. The uh, trade show has 20 booths at this event, and there we have the sponsors, the people in charge of the stands that you can reach, asking for information and to hold uh, different various meetings. LACNIC is also in the trade show because you might be interested in uh, knowing, uh, learning more about LACNIC, um, what LACNIC has to offer. So there, our staff will be ready to uh, talk with the, the participants. There are two social events at night. On Monday, we have the welcome cocktail, and on Wednesday, we have a social event. All the social events, um, if, if uh, they are held in uh, distant places, uh, um, there are uh, shuttles that uh, take you. And then finally, we have a hybrid uh, tool that is called Connect. Connect that. It's a networking tool. And what is important, if you want to participate, regardless whether it's virtual or in person, you need to register to the event. And so you'll be able to contact other people that have also registered, and you'll be able to send a, um, a mail and establish links with anybody you may want to talk to. And on the other hand, we have uh, the event uh, with, we have Zoom events. Those people that are interested in um, participating online, you'll be able to see the people that are also connected and chat with them. So as so we are a large community, today we have more than uh, 1,100 people registered at the event. And we all these spaces and activities of LACNIC, we want them to be free from any uncomfortable situations. We don't want anybody in the community to suffer. So we have a code of conduct that applies to the entire community and that applies to any activity we may uh, organize either in person or online. The 
code of conduct establishes the expected behavior that we uh, what we expect of all the participants to for our, our activities and it describes which are the behaviors that won't be accepted by our community there's an ethics committee it's a committee that interprets the code and uh, uh, receives uh, any claims filed and also there's a group of trusted uh, um, reference that uh, collaborated to address situations uh, either on the venue or sending uh, the information on how to uh, raise a claim and um, if anybody is um, going through a bad situation. So reading and accepting the code of conduct is necessary to register. If you don't read it, you won't be able to register. And there you have the website. Um, uh, please, uh, so um, read that. So finally, after all this information, I imagine that you may be uh, eager to register. You won't want to miss it. So you can enter the page, a website, lacnic41.lacnic.net, etc. And in registration, you can choose to register in person if you travel to Panama or you live in Panama or to participate online through Zoom events. There are some benefits exempting uh, the fees for some groups and organizations. Please consider if you are part of any organization that uh, sponsor the event or, the, or if you're speakers or uh, LACNIC members or a staff uh, of some organization of the ecosystem or if uh, for any reason you have an invitation. The online modality uh, registry, registration is uh, has no cost. So here, um, I'll be available for questions. Yes, Laura, we, we do have questions. So far, we have three. So if you agree, let me read them. The first one is by Raquel Gavi Vasquez Hermoso. She says, is it possible to participate in uh, the uh, Internet Governance Seminar? Raquel, well, it all depends on what you do uh, uh, um, and uh, what organization you are uh, representing will uh, get in touch with uh, the uh, with the group. But uh, please consider that those topics may not be so interesting depending on the field you work in. So what I suggest is Please give us your contact either through the chat or privately and we'll coordinate it. Yes, I'll be in charge, but let me tell you too that Raquel tells us that she's of ISOC Panama. Okay, yes, perfect. So Raquel, or Rachel, before we uh, finish this webinar, I'll get in touch with you so that I can give you the uh, contact of uh, the strategic relations uh, people. So let me go on with the question. Rosani says, uh, for lawyers, could you explain better which activities we can participate for attorneys, uh, for lawyers? Let me go backwards. For lawyers, well, I understand that maybe the tutorials that are highly technical won't be so interesting to you. Uh, what I recommend is that if there's anybody or if people have a broader view and they are mo more focused to, uh, uh, for instance, the regulatory things, Wednesday morning you have two very interesting uh, sessions. One is uh, the evolution, technological evolution of the internet, and the other one is fair share. Those are two very interesting spaces. And on the other hand, I also recommend on Thursday, Thursday afternoon, late in the afternoon, we'll have a policy briefing. And it's always also going, we are also going to uh, discuss the regulatory issues. Well, we need to see whether any of the papers presented in the technical forum uh, have to do with the legal aspects. Some of them have that profile. And then others, certainly in the internet in Panama, uh, present or future, also is recommended for that purpose. Laura, we have an, an additional question. Simon Perez Cordova, he says, will there be a hackathon in this version? 
Yes, we have a hackathon. Very good question, because I I didn't mention it. We, we are going to have a hackathon, and uh, it, it's going to be launched Monday morning. And I think that, well, you'll work all week, and then on Friday, we uh, publish the results. So, we, so, yes, we are going to have a hackathon. Excellent. And then Amaury tells us, in my case, I represent Ondutel. I am flying from Honduras to Panama for uh, Copa Airlines issues. I, I won't get there until uh, the 6th and uh, I come back on the, on the 10th. I won't be at the end uh, of the course. Oh, I regret it. Yes, we also regret it. Yes, but still there are many days and many spaces uh, you can attend. So make the most of the time you're here. Certainly. You, there will be some other opportunity. Okay, so now Milton is asking, is there a parking lot at the event? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know where Adriana is connected. Adriana Rivero is the general coordinator. I don't know whether she's here. Can you hear me? No, she's not there, apparently. Uh, Thomas Lynch says that the hotel does have a parking lot. Yes, it has a parking lot. Yes, the convention center has a parking lot. It's true. So there we have a, an answer for Milton. Excellent. So this question was already answered. Rosani said, well, I would like to attend the seminar on the internet governance if possible. Well, I told you it depends on the organizations you're in touch with or that you belong to. And Amaury is thanking us for our response. So those are all the questions we have so far. Ah, uh, here there's another one. Marvin Avila says, is the registration on Sunday? I, I guess that uh, he, he's asking whether you can already register uh, on Sunday. Yes, starting at 4 p.m. Sunday. So if you are there in person, you can uh, come on Sunday and you can uh, register without the uh, need to do it Monday morning. Excellent. Good. So if there are no further questions, here you have another one. Oh, people are very interested. Gerardo Martinez Cruz says, hello, I work in uh, the Mexico IFT. I would also be interested in the seminar on internet governance. Oh, I see many people that are interested in governance. That's a good uh, piece of information for us. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for uh, expressing it. And uh, I'm telling him the same as uh, Raquel, please get in touch with us privately. So what we're going to do now is please send me an email to my Mariela at uh, lacnic.net, both for Genardo and uh, the other um, uh, people. So I will give you the context um, so remember Mariela, Mariela at lacnic.net. So I'm available for whatever you may need. Well, so those are all the questions. I think that with that, we you would all finish. Oh, sorry, there's an additional question, somebody new. That says, Moises Ortiz says, my greetings, I'm new at the event and I'd like to know which would be the re activities recommended for me. I'm of the networking area. For networking, what would we recommend? Well, if you're going to participate there in person, what is essential is the meeting of new participants on Monday at 8.30. I know it's early, but it's good to understand uh, how the event will flow. And then on Monday, there will be some tutorials. You may be interested. Yes, all the tutorials actually are very interesting on Monday. 
Yes, and even those that have to do the technical tutorials and those that have to do with the uh, registry area. Yes, exactly. Yes, and uh, we advise you to participate of the technical forum. And there, in the two days of the technical forum, Tuesday and Thursday, please visit the, your site and uh, see the titles of the presentations so that you may write down uh, the timetables. Anna Mueller is asking a great question for the guests. If we have any limitations in terms of a uh, food, yes, when you register and there are people who have um, issues relating to what they are allowed to eat, there might be vegetarians or uh, celiac disease. So I'm sure that when you register, you can specify that. Adrián is telling me that as this has to be requested ahead of time, the best thing is to write to meeting at lacnic.net. Maybe we can add that to the chat box, meeting at lacnic.net. This in the chat, you have the address. So we have that information ahead of time. Great. And with that, we will have covered everything. An anonymous assistant is asking if the RICE event will take place. If that is so, where can I register? No, not during this event. We'll have LAC C CERT, and there will be a training session during that C CERT event, but we won't have RICE in this occasion. So those were all the questions, Laura. Shall we close then? I will stop sharing my screen then. Well, let me thank everyone, not only for participating, but for all the questions and your contributions. And we look forward to seeing you both in person or remotely. And hopefully this session was positive so that you know more about LACNIC and the event. Good afternoon. Thank you very much.